Can you tell me about rationing? Uh, rationing continued throughout the war and I believe it finished in 1952. Everything was short supply, of course. We could only have food that, on the whole, that was produced in this country. Um, so it was pretty bland. My mother always said, you eat brains, not food these days. And it was a question of making the rations go round. And my mother used to say, supper was the worst meal. If you'd had bread and butter for tea, you couldn't have butter in the evening. And but we, we, here in the country, we were lucky we could grow vegetables and lettuce and you know, all the usual things. Uh, but um, if you lived in town, you sometimes could get a bit more food. How did but rationing... you had to register with a shop and you held your ration book. When you took your order or went shopping, you went to the shop, you took it with you and they marked off the coupons. And sweet coupons were blue and they were issued in a huge pile and just had, I think, the sweets we used to have. I know when I was in the Wrens, we used to get, I think, once a fortnight. We had a bowl, usually, a bowl of Nestle's peppermint cream and a few boiled sweets. Which shop did you go to for your groceries in rationing time? We went to Mr Reynolds, uh, uh, in, on the corner of Crabtree Lane. I see. And what sort of things did you get there? Well, all basic things, um, butter, cheese, all the basic, but there was nothing fancy. It was, how, it how, was simply balanced food. How much did you get then, sort of butter and things like that? I think, I might not be quite right, but I seem to remember it was two ounces of butter four ounces of margarine, and it was margarine. Um, I think it was two ounces of so-called lard for cooking, but what the fact was, I don't know. Um, tea, I think, was two ounces a week. Uh, meat was rationed according to quality. So if you had a cheaper cut, you got a bit more meat than if you had a good cut. Where did you get your meat from? It, um, Palmer's the butcher in Shillington. So how did that work? Did you go to Shillington to get it? Oh, no, no. He used to come round with his van and, and stand outside and you'd go and look and see what he'd got and... He might have a bit of offal or something like that. But, um, and of course, or you might say, he'd say, oh, you can have a, a little bit of stewing beef and two sausages. Well, you've got to make that do. So we have an awful lot of what you might call toad in the hole. It was very difficult and it got very monotonous, but we didn't take any notice. Mind you, when I was in the services, we were well fed. Um, we always had brown sugar and Sunday was always roast pork and cold pork in the evening. No, we, we were very well fed because you know, there's a lot of you've got a lot to deal with. But at home, when I we used to come home on the evening or anything, mother had always got eggs. So we'd have an egg in some form or another. A cocket egg was popular. What's that? It's a little dish, like a tiny sauce, but a cocket pan, and uh, you break the egg in, and put a little bit of butter, pepper and salt and a drop of milk 
and bake it on top of the cooker. And they've often had them. Oh. What about rationing with clothes? Was Were clothes rationed? Yes, clothes were rationed. You had your coupons, I can't remember how many. And when you wanted something, if they got it in the shop, you'd go and try it on and purchase it. But um, the prices were, sound ridiculous. You could get a, a good coat for a pound. And how many coupons would that be? I don't know. But um, towards the end of the war, when things were just coming back, I was still in. If you put in a request for a chip for pyjamas, some shops would swap that for a coat. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Did you make your own clothes? Hmm? Did you make your own clothes? Quite a lot, yes. And what? renovate them and... I've seen my mother arm pick a school tunic and turn it. What do you mean, turn it? Well, put the outside in and it wear again. And men's collars? Yes. <laughs>